Okay, so we have all these pieces that we talked about in the half scale pant. This is our pocket bag. You can see it's shaped a little weird, but it's meant to sew on the front of the pant and then fold in half. So it's inside fabric is inside the pocket bag, but that means you're gonna have one that is contrasted, which is why the lining goes in here or the facing. This is the facing. It would be sewn on right here in this corner. And then when you fold it in half, then the facing is what shows in the pocket bag. This is our fly extension, I mean our fly shield, our fly, our actual fly. Oh, I'm like, wait, we're missing parts. We're still missing, there it is. Okay, so we have our fly extension. This comes down the inside right here on our pant front to be the return of the zipper. This is just to help you know how to write on or draw on or mark your stitch line on your fly zipper. You're not gonna actually cut this piece out of fabric at all. Some patterns will have the stitching guide, some patterns will not. So just so you know what that is. This is how the yoke is shaped. And this has to fit on the top of this. And you can see how they would go together. This is not always straight. Sometimes this line is straight and this line is curved. So you're fitting a curved piece to a straight piece, piece, especially in the women's patterns. This piece will be curved and that's to help give you a more flattering shape in the back instead of rectangular, which means you just have to make sure you notch it or clip it once it's attached because sewing curves to straights don't always work. Uh, sometimes your waistband will come in two separate pieces. This is a right piece and a left piece. Sometimes it's one piece that you cut on the fold. Sometimes it's one piece that you cut two of, but you're always going to need interfacing on your waistband, always. I don't care what fabric you're using, you use interfacing. You need that structure, not only for your closure, for your button, for your buttonhole, you need extra stability there, but also because your waistband is gonna take all the gravitational pull on these pants. And it has to be able to keep its shape and not lose its shape and to be able to keep all the weight of the pants in place. So always interface this. I usually interface my shield unless I'm using a really heavy, I mean my extension, unless I'm using a really heavy fabric, then sometimes I don't need interfacing there. Same with my extension. Um, you can see my pant front has the cutout for the zipper because it should match my pocket bag because that's where they're gonna attach, is right there. So, <clears throat> how do I know how these pants are gonna fit me? How are we gonna find out that information? I have transferred all the markings, all the notches, all the grain lines, all the information off the pattern, I have transferred that onto these half scales. This is all the information I'm given. I'm not given anything else. So how do I know where alterations need to be made or if they need to be made and how am I going to make those? Think to your slopers. What kind of reference marks did your slopers have? Say that louder. Waistline, right, it had a waistline, a knee line, a crotch line, a hip line. Do you have any of that information? You can make an assumption that this is your waistline but what if they're a mid-rise pant or a high-rise pant or a low-rise pant? Then that's may or may not be at waistline anymore. So what do we know? Based on our instructions, we know we have a 5 8 inch seam allowance. That's what we know. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this pattern and I'm gonna draw on my seam allowances, particularly on my front and on the back piece, okay? So if I were to draw, and th this piece particularly is half scale, so I'm not gonna have a 5 8 seam allowance because it's half scale. So I would have half that. So I would draw on my seam allowance, draw on my seam allowance, and I'm only gonna draw it in a couple of places for right now. I'm gonna take some of these others out of the way because right now I'm just trying to find a reference line. 
That would be a good place to start. Okay. Based on shape, I know that this right here is gonna be somewhere in the crotch area, right? In the inseam, right? This is my inseam, this is my crotch curve. So I know my crotch line is gonna be right here. It's gonna be somewhat perpendicular to the side seam and I cannot have it come from cut line point. It needs to come from seam allowance point. So I'm just gonna draw in my crotch curve. I mean my crotch line. On the front and on the back. Okay, now I have a reference line. How does that help me? Does it help me? What can I measure or check now that I have a crotch line? Sorry, what? Is your hip at your crotch line though? No. no, it's not. So you can check crotch depth, which is how far it is from the crotch line to your belly button. You can check that now. And you can also check crotch length, which is how long it's going to be from the top of the pant all the way to the bottom in the front and from the bottom all the way to the top of the pant in the back. However, it's not just this piece and this piece if you're checking length. Because what else is going to get added? You have a yoke, first of all, and then a waistband, both front and back. So if we are checking crotch depth, we would need to have our seam allowance here at the top, have our seam allowance here on the waistband, both sides, because this waistband is going to get folded in half this way. Okay. And crotch depth, we would measure from crotch line up to seam allowance here. And then measure this distance here. And that should be the same place as your measurement sitting on the table from the table to your belly button. That's how you're going to know if you have enough depth. Yes. Since that waistband gets folded in half. We, do we measure the whole thing or half? You would measure half. So you would measure to the center line, which is right here where these notches are. Oh, okay. okay, so you would measure that. So <clears throat> I need to be able to put a hip line on here. So I'm just gonna make sure that I have a piece of paper in behind it, just so I can make some marks on it. Now, if I had my measurement chart in front of me, and let's just say my crotch depth measurement was 10 inches. Is anybody else's in that nine to 11 inches range on your crotch depth measurement? I see one nodder. That's about usually where it is. So once again, thinking I'm in half scale. So if I have 10 inches, then I'm going to be measuring five inches which means if I put this right in the center front, right here on my crotch line, this mark right here on my paper is my belly button. I still have waistband to put on top of this. Okay, that means my top of pant is right here. My belly button is right here. Now that I know that, what other information can I put on here? What is my distance that I measured from my waist to my full hip? Let's just say minus seven. So right here from my belly button, it would be parallel to my crotch line. and I just added a hip line. Can everybody see how I got that information? Now, if I have a hip line on both front and back, I can tell the difference between here and here. So that's gonna be my hip line in the back. <clears throat> and now that I have that information, 
I can take the distance from here to here and times it by two and take the distance from here to here and times it by two, add those two distances together and I have a hip circumference on what the pants are gonna be finished at the full hip line. Okay, same thing down here in the thigh. You can go from seam allowance to seam allowance and seam allowance to seam allowance and you add those together and you get a thigh circumference. Why am I not timesing down here by two? Because it's an individual leg. Up here you have four quadrants of the body, a right and a left front and a right and a left back. And down here you just have a front and a back. Okay? So now I know where my waist is. I can do a waist circumference. I can do a crotch length. I can do a crotch depth. I can do a full hip. I can decide if I need to lengthen or shorten this. What if you want your top of waistband to sit three inches below your belly button? Then you can adjust this depth. Just remember if you're adjusting depth, you must increase length because you've just cut out two inches of crotch length by shortening this. Does that make sense? If I were to take an inch out of this so it sits an inch below belly button, I've taken an inch out right here. I've also taken an inch out right here, which just means my crotch length just shortened by two inches. So while they will sit lower in your belly button, you won't be able to do anything else. So you would have to increase that two inches out this way with a prominent crotch curve or a prominent pubic area adjustment to be able to get that length that you need without adding height. Two separate things. Okay, now if I, let's say that I'm going to make a small waist adjustment. I'm gonna, my hip line is good, my crotch curve is good, my crotch depth is good, but I need to make the waist smaller. That is the large or small waist adjustment, which this is my side seam, this is my crotch center front. So that adjustment's gonna happen over here. What else am I impacting? What goes in this space? Your pocket, but not just your pocket. Then you've got your pocket bag, you've got your facing, you've got your waistband that are all unaffected by this one movement. And in the back, you've got your back, you've got your yoke, and you've got your waistband, which are all affected by that movement because they are all from the hip line up. Does that make sense? If I make a mark here and I slash it here and push this piece this way, my pocket opening just got smaller, my pocket bag just got smaller, my facing may not have fit. What happens if I slash it and make it bigger? Then my facing is gonna stop short, my pocket bag is gonna not be big enough, and my waistline may, waistband may be too big or too small. So all of those pieces are gonna be affected. What happens if we just make the thighs smaller? Do we have to change anything above the crotch line if we're changing the thigh? Probably not other than crotch length, which may be affected. But otherwise, everything from crotch down, there's only the front and the back. That's the only thing that's gonna to be touched, okay? So sometimes alterations are a process the tracing and the figuring out what size you need and then figuring out what alterations need to be made and making those alterations take time. And it's gonna feel like busy work and it's gonna feel like a useless process. However, if you take the time to do that at the beginning, not only will you not waste fabric on a product that you hate at the end, but number two, it makes the difference between a $10 pair of jeans and a $250 pair of jeans. These are the changes that make the money difference. This is the difference between an off the rack pair of jeans that may or may not fit, may or may not have what you want, and a pair of custom one-offs, okay? That's what we're doing. We're not working towards home sewing. We're not talking about hobby. We're talking about professionalism and custom. That's what we're working for. All right, does anybody have any questions?